Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this episode, we're going to be looking at polyrhythms. Polyrhythms um, occur when you've got two or more pulses which are running at slightly different tempi but um, even out into a single cycle. So in this diagram on the left we have a two against three polyrhythm where the time around the circle, around one cycle, is the same but in the inner circle it's divided into two in one part and on the outside the time is divided into three so we get two against three what's sometimes called a cross rhythm. On the right hand side there's a similar diagram this time we've got um, a time base that's divided into three on the inner circle on one part and a time base divided into four on the other one so we're getting three against four. So it means that the overall cycle length is the same but the subdivisions um, are slightly different. This kind of um, pattern, this polyrhythm pattern, is commonly found in various musics around the world uh, possibly most famously in um, African musics and of course in Western musics that are derived from African like jazz and pop or rock music. This particular video, the YouTube link um, is up there, has a very good example of um, playing polyrhythms so I encourage you to have a listen to that to hear what it's like. But let's see how we can now build that in PD. So the first thing is we need to specify the um, time base for the overall cycle. We're going to do that with a metronome and for example I'm going to use, give a default value of 2000 milliseconds to this metronome which means the two second um, output. We've got a toggle which will turn on and off this metronome and I'll also create a slider which is going to send values to it. Um, so this can range, probably won't want anything less than say 100 milliseconds, uh, might go up to 5000 milliseconds for example. Um, okay, call that the cycle duration, give it a colour. Um, and I can show the value there. So we can see that we can change the um, metronome time there. If we put a bang, we can see what that's like if I turn it on. I've now got quite a slow metronome. It's going to give us our overall timing. I'm going to send this um, overall cycle duration to trigger our independent parts. In order to keep our patch clean I'm going to use quite a few sends. The first send I'm going to use, um, let's just call it the duration or D for short, it's going to send, uh, actually let's make that duration, it's going to send the duration. I also want to make sure that things start and stop at the same time so I'm going to also send out this toggle message so we can start several metronome at the same time and I'm also going to send uh, the metronome pulse itself uh, with the message called met. Okay so this is um, our overall um, cycle duration. So we need to be able to send that to um, a couple of locations. So the next thing is creating a, an individual part. So one of our parts, we're going to use a metronome um, to control the tempo, the speed of one of our individual parts. So what's going to be important is that we're going to um, receive the overall cycle duration and we need to do the math that's necessary to check um, what that's going to be. So we're going to use an expression box to do that math. It's going to be the input, the duration input, which I'm going to take in the second outlet, 
divided by the number of steps um, that we want, which I'm going to put in the first inlet. Um, sorry. Dollar two. So the duration is going to go in there, so it's going to be the duration uh, divided by the um, time that's going to come in. So we could do that, for example, just for the minute with a message box, with a number box. We'll have a look at the outlet. If we send that duration, um, let's go down to close to two seconds. And if we wanted that to be divided by one, we can see that it's going to be about two seconds. If it's divided by two, then it's going to be half of that. If it's divided by three or four, it's going to be um, a different value. So this is um, what's going to go into our metronome. Okay. So that's all good and well. I want to um, use a visual way of showing this because it's kind of a bit hard just to toggle that. So if I use the H, not the H slider, let's instead use the H radio button. So this will send out um, numbers from zero, one, two, three, etc. So we can specify the number of steps um, that we want with this. We don't usually ever want um, zero steps, so I'm going to make sure that we add one to that so that our smallest number of divisions, subdivisions is one. So that's all good. This is taking up lots of space. Give me a little bit more space. Um, so that's going to be our first subdivision. Okay, excellent. We can see that as we select the subdivisions, the metronome speed is there. We want to start um, that metronome at the same time as we start our main metronome. So we're going to receive that toggle um, and we can use a bang to see how that goes. So now we've got, uh, this is going to be four times that when we start our major cycle metronome. You'll see that every time this cycle duration goes, for every one of those we're currently getting four bangs um, in the subdivision. We can make that two instead. Now let's restart. Or we can make that six. Again, restart just to keep them in sync. All right, so that all works. Um, we need to be able to make a sound so we can hear that. Um, so let's add a little bit of basic synthesis. We'll use um, an oscillator. And uh, let's give it some frequency. Maybe 200 hertz or so. And then we can have an amplifier so we can give it some volume and that's going to get uh, that's all good so now we need to trigger that oscillator with some kind of amplitude so I'm going to use a v-line object to do that pass it a message which says go to a maximum volume over five milliseconds then go to zero just take 100 milliseconds to fade back out, delay that by the 5 milliseconds we've got for our amplitude. We can bang that there, that value will control the amplitude, and then that can go to our DAC. Alright, so it's just a simple tone. So we can hear that when we bang there. So now let's make this go.
So as we increase the number of subdivisions, then they're going to be faster or slower as we go. All right, so this we've got a now a way of subdividing our overall cycle duration. So that's all great, but let's copy and paste all of that, bring it up here, um, and this will be another part so we can get a second um, subdivision going here. Um, otherwise, everything else can be the same. We can change our tone to say 400 hertz so we can hear that that's um, a higher tone. Now, so if we set that duration up again, let's make this one have three subdivisions and this one's got two subdivisions. Let's see if that all works. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of clipping because the amplitude's a little loud. So let me just turn that down a little bit. So you can hear that that's uh, now doing its thing. If we stop that, I can um, sp speed up that cycle. Um, I have to re-trigger these and go. So that's uh, two against three. I can do three against four. Restart it. So, and we can continue to copy and do other subdivisions and divide it into more segments. Um, we can obviously clean this up so that as we change the cycle, everything updates, but I will leave that as an exercise for you. Um, see you in another video.